Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to design shirts like Chinatown Market so that you can expand your skill set as a merch graphic designer or apply this method to your own brand. Let's go. Yo, what's good? It's your boy Dixon from Twitter Designs. Disclaimer, I just want to note that the real method to design like Chinatown Market is to actually hand draw the designs, but I assume a lot of you don't know how to do that. So we'll be using stock illustrations instead that I have compiled for this tutorial. Make sure you download them with the rest of the assets from my store. It's completely free. Just put zero in the price box before you check out. In return, just drop a like and subscribe so that I can keep this channel running, guys. Come on, it's just a click. Right, so first off, we're gonna create a new document. The most common print size is A3, but I would always suggest you to ask your print shop first because almost all of them have different guidelines. Um, another common size is A2, which is mostly used on graphic tees because it's huge and covers most of the shirt area. But today, I'm just gonna show you guys my usual print size, which is 5,000 by 6,600 pixels at 300 dpi. And then I'm just gonna set the background to white because we're designing for white shirts today and just click create. First thing we're gonna do is the typeface. So click on the type tool here or just hit T on your keyboard. And then I'm gonna set the font size to 200. And then I'm just gonna type intuitive. You can type whatever you want, obviously. Um, now we change the font to college. Make sure you install the font first beforehand, guys. And then after that, just go to this character panel here and we're going to set the vertical scale to 160 and then the horizontal scale to 95, then set the kerning to metrics. But sometimes it actually looks better in optical. So you guys can test it out first and see for yourself. After that, let's just add 10 to the tracking. Moving on, I'm going to start warping the text. So command T and then click on this warp button here select arch set the bend to 52 and there you go this is just one way that you can recreate the iconic Chinatown market arch logo that you see in a lot of their designs before we proceed let me show you guys the colors that we'll be working on today like always hex codes are on screen so pause the video and then copy them i usually like to put the colors into the canvas so that i can easily pick them while i design so yeah Okay, now let's convert the text layer to shape. Just right click and then convert to shape. Set the stroke to 30 pixels. Make sure the color is black. And then I'm gonna set the fill to this green. Next step is adding the main element into the design. So open the assets folder that you have just downloaded and then select the CTM illustrations file here. Um, I would say don't mess with the settings because I've pre-saved them for you guys. But if you're working on a smaller file and your computer can't handle a bigger file size, then you can size it down. Once it's open, let's just select this skull illustration here. So using the elliptical mark K tool, hit M on your keyboard and then just drag it over this skull. Try not to include any other illustrations inside it. And then after that, just command C to copy, go to the working file then just command v to paste now we're going to repeat the same process but this time i'm going to select this jaguar illustration here so using the elliptical marque tool drag it over the illustrations like this and then command c to copy and go to the working file command v to paste Right now, I'm going to add a black color overlay on this skull illustration because I noticed that it isn't really black. It's more like a dark gray, which is something that I don't want for this. Um, so yeah, let's just add a black color over it and then rasterize it. Now we're going to convert each of these layers into smart object and then rename them and then group them together. After that, we can start playing with the placement. I mean, where to put the skull or where to put the Jaguar. Maybe we can rotate it um, 95 degree or whatever, you know, basically just finding the right flow for this design. Once you guys done that, go to edit and then transform and then flip horizontal. Now we can start play with the rotation of it. 
um, again this is completely up to you you can rotate it clockwise or anti-clockwise completely up to you guys i would always suggest that you play with it yourself so depending on what kind of placement you like the design would come out differently now for me i'm just gonna go with this i think this looks pretty good let me just um, size it down a little bit now we're going to create the base for this skull illustration so using the magic wand tool click on the outside of the skull right click then select inverse add a new layer move it below the skull and then command delete the base is where we add colors to these illustrations i'll show that to you guys in a moment now we do the same thing for the jaguar Now let's add a couple more elements to the design like this rose and this fire here. Um, I also noticed that I forgot to get rid of white color from this illustration. So using the color range tool, select the white color and then just delete it. Um, notice there's parts of this fire illustration that I don't want. So we're gonna use the pen tool to get rid of those. Basically just go around it like this, making sure that the width is as consistent as possible. Then right click, make selection, and then just delete. Okay guys, so now create the base for those two elements as well, and then rename them accordingly, and then tag colors on the layers as well, so that we don't get confused because it'll get a bit messy from now. Um, this is the design so far. You can copy the placement of the elements. It's pretty straightforward, so it's really easy. Now we can start adding colors. Let's go with the rose first. Click on its base layer, add a new layer above it, and then while holding on the option key on your keyboard, this icon that's your mouse um, should pop up when you hover it between these two layers. I want you to click on it, and it'll link the new layer to the base layer. The reason for this method is that you, when you brush the colors, it'll keep it within the illustration without stepping over the outlines. Now let's rename the colors. Basically using the hard round brush, we will apply colors in the design by brushing on this new layer. Let's just start with the red for the rose first and then the green for the leaves. Let's move on with the skull again, same method, add a new layer above the base layer and then using the brush tool, apply this blue color to it. But the difference for this one is I'm going to add a highlight to it. So using the eyedropper tool, pick on this yellow color and then just brush it freehand kind of like this. Um, the highlights are areas on an object where light is hitting it So only paint on the left area because if you paint it too far right It'll be the area for the shadow and it wouldn't look realistic That looks pretty good. Now let's move on to the Jaguar, same process, but we'll use the yellow color for the base. And then for the highlight, we're gonna go with this orange. Um, the light source for the Jaguar is the opposite of the skull. So brush the highlights on the right areas of the Jaguar, kind of like this. Same method for the fire element, it's really easy, just brush it over in this orange color. Now I feel like the design is a bit empty so let's go back to the illustrations file and bring this star illustration into the design and then let's size it down a little bit. Now hold on the option key and then just drag the star kind of like this, it'll create a new copy of the star. Basically now we're just going to scatter the stars all over the design making it fuller. I feel like it's a bit off having this white section in the middle so now I'm adding a new layer and then I'm just gonna paint it black to kind of fill it in. Um, yeah so now the final step is adding some kind of slogan at the bottom of the design so using the type tool but let's reset everything back to default first. After that select the front broccoli 
and then I'm just gonna type in something random like market by market and that is it guys it's a pretty easy tutorial and one of the many good things about this kind of design is you can actually change the color of the elements to kind of something like this so it's more like a variation of the original design That is it for today guys, hope you learned something new from this video, I will be making more tutorials in the future but if you have any suggestions let me know in the comments below, as usual subscribe now if you haven't already, follow me on TikTok and Instagram for more content, stay safe, catch you on the next one.